Messenger is all about being short and sweet in terms of the copy you write. Still, you may want to communicate lots of information to your users across a series of messages. But the question becomes, how do you pace that? Everybody has different reading speeds, so what's the best approach? That's the question we're going to answer in this lesson. And we'll start talking about quick replies, and then later we'll discuss the typing animation and how you can use that to pace the conversation. We'll start in the welcome message here using a text element, and we'll just greet the user by name. We'll say, hi, first name, and now is where we'll add a quick reply. The quick reply will allow the user to read at their own speed and also serve as an acknowledgement of this first message so they can go forward and advance at their own timing. We'll add the quick reply here and say something like, hi, if we want, we can add a waving emoji for added value, great. We'll now add another message here in the bot. We'll say, this bot will help you find the perfect present for your loved one. Great. We'll add a quick reply here and say, let's shop. We can add a gift emoji. Awesome. Now we could go through the rest of the conversation, of course, as we've done in previous lessons, giving options such as, what's your budget range? So I'll show an example of that. What's your budget range? And now here, instead of just giving the single quick reply, we can provide multiple options and then send people down different pathways. So we can say less than $100 for our budget range, $100 to $250, and perhaps more than $250. Now the key, or one of the keys with quick replies, using them to pace your conversation, there's really no need to assign user attributes here unless you want to track where there are bottlenecks, which we'll talk more about later in the course, as opposed to assigning a value to the budget range here where that information would be more valuable to capture and segment. But at the end of the day, there's really no risk to adding the attributes for that added data, but just know that it's not necessary at all. So let's go through and test this in the bot so you can see what this looks like for the end user. So we'll start the conversation. Hi, Andrew. Notice nothing is happening in terms of automation if I don't proceed with the conversation. So if this takes me one second to read, if it takes me 30 seconds, I can again go at my own pace. That's the takeaway here. So I'll click hi. I can then read this message once I'm done, advance forward and you get the idea here. So I'm going at my own pace, it's leisurely, I'm not feeling overwhelmed or rushed in any way in terms of the experience. Now the other option that I have is using the typing animation. For that I'm gonna use a new group just so I don't have to go through and delete all of these individual elements. So I'll create a group and just call it typing animation. I'll create a block here, I'll just leave it untitled. And the typing animation, the pro of it is that it's fully automated. The user doesn't have to take any action. They don't have to click a button each time a new message comes in. The downside of it, of course, is that it may make the user feel rushed. If you set a predetermined time for the typing animation, then if the user is a slow reader, that can negatively affect their experience. So let me show you what this looks like. Let's add a text card here and say, hi, first name, just like before. And we'll say, this bot is designed to help you pick the perfect present for your significant other, let's say. Right? So we have created this text, and let's now add the typing animation. So I'll say this would take maybe half a second, a second to read. So I'm going to add a typing animation here, and let's set it for half a second here. Great. Now. Obviously, the second message will take a little bit longer. We don't have a third message, though, but we can add just a test one here so we can determine the timing. And let's say this is two and a half seconds. So I'll add a typing animation, cut it down to 2.5, and there we go. So now let's test this and see how we feel. If we feel it's on pace with our reading speed, or at least our user's reading speed, or if it's too fast, too slow. So I'll click Test the Bot. There we go. Hi, Andrew. This bot is designed to help you pick the perfect... Pre okay, so clearly it is too fast and we want to slow that down, at least based on my reading speed. But remember, of course, it's not based on your reading speed, it's the reading speed of your audience. Now, 
one thing to note here as well is that there's a great resource for you to use. So I'm gonna copy this text here as an example and go to HemingwayApp.com. This is a super valuable resource where you can paste in the text of your messages and then if you click show more down here, it'll give you an estimated reading time. So in this case, you see it's three seconds. Obviously this isn't a hard and fast rule. Maybe you make it a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but it will help give you an idea of if you're using the typing animation, how long in general you should make that. So Hemingway app is a great resource, not only for timing, but also for figuring out how well your copy is written. So we'll go back into chat fuel here and just as a refresher in closing, the typing animation and quick replies both have their pros and cons. With the quick replies, it's great that the user can go at their own pace. Of course, the downside is they actually have to take action and interact with the bot by clicking every message or every couple messages, however you wanna set that up. Whereas with the typing animation, the user doesn't have to do anything, it's fully automated, but it may rush the experience for them. So now you should figure out quick replies or the typing animation.